you may be a student in one of my online art history courses or maybe one of my face-to-face -face courses maybe you're just coming across this channel and you're wondering how do you take notes in such a visual field as art history and really they don't usually look like this but what i want to do is walk you through especially for those of you that maybe don't have a lot of experience taking notes etc how my videos are laid out and how i would recommend students take notes now i should point out my notes typically look even worse than this mostly sketches and a little bit of notation and this is why i was a c student in undergrad i figured it out in grad school but even then it was usually here's a title here's a bunch of information moving on to the next point it didn't make a lot of sense now what we're going to do here is i'm going to walk you through based on how my lectures are laid out on youtube here or on these in these videos i'm going to walk you through exactly how you would want to take notes in one of my classes this could be world of the arts this could be art history 201 202 203 210 uh there's a lot of possibilities history of interior design etc they all follow the same protocol because i am very formulaic with these things i do so intentionally because it gives you cues as to what to do now there are four purposes of note taking that i want you to be aware of only one of which is a written record for review after all you could download the otter app and it transcribes videos and it's brilliant you would have all the information that i say but it wouldn't be terribly helpful because taking notes also forces you to pay attention it requires effort which demands active listening and what this does by requiring you to condense and rephrase all of the information basically you're taking my information boiling it down which aids your understanding because you are translating as you're writing but it also will help improve memorization so that you don't have to go back to your notes for every single thing on the exam so a couple of uh quick hacks here one is at least for my classes print the powerpoint there are if you're in one of my classes i provide the powerpoint for every single lecture print that off and what you can do is simply print it off and take notes under each slide that is the easiest way to do it if you are here from another class another instructor who doesn't have the powerpoints then you're going to follow the method that i'm going to lay out for you hopefully making life a little bit easier so let's start with the beginning every week every playlist on this channel is a single chapter or a single section for a class for example you might see ancient greece this is the overall header for the week's material so that is going to be important that's going to be the first thing in your notes is the header laying out the society maybe laying out the time frame now part of that i'm going to provide you with context i'm going to provide you with some element of history which is going to be helpful for you to understand the art that's being created maybe it's something about the reformation maybe it's something about the ancient greeks maybe it's something about islam in that period but it's something that's going to be necessary then after that i will probably give you depending on your time period either a movement with a definition or a time period in the ancient world i tend to deal with time periods in the more contemporary world we deal with movements if you're dealing with renaissance to modern you're probably going to be looking at a lot of movement definitions and this would be the second major heading basically every time you see my little avatar show up so every time you see and let me get to the right thing here this guy show up or you see this guy show up it means there's something that has to be written in your notes it is a header of some form so keep that in mind that is one of those triggers that i've built into my material quite intentionally now with the movement one of the most important things you're going to do with that movement or period of time is define it with a movement 
I will probably tell you exactly when it happens, and then I will give you a rough definition of it. With a period, I will tell you when it happens, and I will give you rough characteristics of that period. For example, the Greek Hellenistic is made up of statuary that tends to be psychologically active and emotionally available to the viewer, that sort of thing. So make sure that you're writing down that definition. Basically, in my slides, in my material, if you see a definition on the screen, it is probably very important and should be written down. Then, moving down the line, the artist. And once again, you'll notice my little avatar guy shows up, and we are dealing with a specific artist. There will always be an artist slide there, unless you're in the ancient world, in which case there might not be an artist. We might simply be dealing with a place or a period. For example, the Greek classical in Athens, that sort of thing. But they would serve the same purpose. It is one step down. And I will always give you some background. For example, hey, we're talking about Athens in the 4th century. Here's some information you should know. Or we're talking about Manet. Here's some background information so you better understand the work that they create. Whoever or whatever it might be. Now, from the artist or period, usually I'll give you two or three slides worth of background information there, especially in the Renaissance to modern period. Sometimes history of interior design, this is more period than artist, and what you get is a movement and a sub-movement instead of artist, but uh, you'll see that in your specific class. Then we have the title. Now, I will typically show you a slide like this with the title, and it will have the artist and title there. That's because I break up my material by specific pieces so that it's modular. I can pull pieces out or put them in at will, changing playlists whenever it becomes necessary. In this case, you see Velázquez Las Meninas. In the case of a lot of my more contemporary work, this title slide is more and more becoming a framed piece with people in front of it. The purpose of that is to give you a sense of just how big it is, because I find that to be more effective than putting a banana in here or putting some kind of scale in. I've seen those in textbooks, and they just don't give you quite the sense of size that seeing people in front of it really do. This will give you the title of the piece, and almost certainly uh, will be followed by a more in-depth slide, but we'll get there. So this is our title piece. So, so far we've moved down. We have our header at the top. This is basically what are we doing for that week. We have the movement or period. What are we doing specifically? What are the sort of sub parts that we're breaking this header into? Then we have the artist or period if you're in the ancient world, which again continues to break things down, and then title. And what will frequently happen is after you deal with a specific piece of art, you go back out here to another artist, or you might go back out to another movement. You can see I use a standard outline format, at least for myself. So that title is always going to have uh, the name of the artist and the piece, and then the next slide frequently is going to have the artist title and date. So it's got all the information. I don't put this on the initial slide because I tend to use the initial slide as my thumbnail. So it's going to generally be on the second slide or maybe one of the first few that I go through. Sometimes there's some extra background that I need to give to the piece before I really give it to you formally. Of course, these are videos. You can always pause things. You can always look at things. But this tells you that we're getting into the body of the work. You'll notice that there is no avatar in this slide. I'm focused on the piece. Sometimes I will turn up somewhere, uh, but usually not initially because I want you to focus on the art. Now, in this case, this is where you start getting into that in-depth information. So you're writing about the individual piece. What does he say about Guernica? What does he say about Olympia? whatever the piece happens to be. And you would list this out, and typically, the way that my notes are written, these are all one sentence or less bits of information. You're really boiling it down. Listen to what I have to say and break it down into its constituent parts. So that makes life a lot easier and will help your understanding because you are breaking it down and better understanding the material.
Now, there are a lot of other ways to take notes. You don't have to use my outline method. Mine is just the one that I work with. There's the Cornell note-taking method where each of these pages is very specific and I never could deal with it because I don't have a mind that works that way quickly. I can't do that note-taking. Some people will have something more like what you see on the right, these different little boxes, and that's fine too. Some people get really complicated. Some students enjoy in art history actually sketching the piece and that's fine. But no matter what method you use, whether it's on a computer, by hand, etc., make sure that you are taking notes on the material. It is incredibly helpful for you. Not only is it something that you can take away from the class and have in the future should you ever need to refer back to it, but it's going to really help you understand the material in the class and help you when it comes to exams, even open book, open notes exams. This way, you know what to go back to. What video was I looking at when he said this? Where should I look to make this connection? It's going to be in your notes. So I understand that it's really easy to sit there and say, why bother taking notes? I've given you some reasons why you should. Let me give you a cautionary tale why it's important. Throughout college, I frequently didn't take notes. I didn't pay much attention in class. And then I was stuck trying to decipher the textbook with almost no background. I might as well not have been in class. It made life a lot more difficult for me. When I went to grad school and finally started taking notes, suddenly my grades improved dramatically. I went from a C student to an A student. Why? Because I had something to look at. I had something that was a lot easier to absorb and understand because, of course, it was my words and my material. So no matter how you do it, make sure that you take notes and use the formula that I've laid out in the slides. If you see my avatar, it's probably something you need to write down. If there's a definition, write it down. And if there isn't, then it's probably a discussion that I'm having with you on that specific piece, artist, period, etc. Hopefully, this helps you become more successful in art history.